the LCA Mk2 aircraft is envisioned as a 4.5-generation fighter, surpassing the capabilities of its predecessor, the LCA Mk1. Weighing in at 7.8 tons, the LCA Mk2 is designed to accommodate a substantial payload of 6.5 tons, including various weapon systems. Distinguishing itself from the Mk1A variant, the Mk2 flaunts a substantial upgrade in its arsenal, with a total of 11 weapons pods, as opposed to the 8 on the previous model. How the manufacturer plans to equip the Mk2 with a range of cutting-edge missiles, including indigenous ones like Ustra and Rudram, alongside esteemed French counterparts such as Meteor, Mica, and Scalp. With increased weight and enhanced weapon carrying capacity make the LCA Mk2 a formidable addition to India's aviation capability. Furthermore, the Ministry of Defense has generously allocated funds to ensure that the LCA Mk2 project faces no financial hurdles. However, the future of the aircraft is currently uncertain, not due to a funding shortage, but because of the lack of approval for transfer of technology related to the GE-414 engines obtained from the US. This particular issue has significantly impacted the progress of the project. This conundrum surrounding TOT of the GE-414 engines from the US has become a captivating factor in the project's timeline, igniting a delicate interplay between technological ambitions and pragmatic considerations. U.S. Congressman Rohit Connor, during his recent trip to India, indicated to the media that the deal for the transfer of technology is likely to be finalized ahead to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the United States, which is slated to take place in June. There are hopes that Prime Minister Modi's upcoming visit to the United States could potentially resolve this issue and finalize the deal for the TOT approval. The LCA Mk2 jets are set to be equipped with GEF for 14 INS-6 engines from the renowned US giant GE Aviation. The F-14 INS-6 engine is specifically tailored for India, incorporating safety criteria for single-engine aircraft, enhanced performance, and increased durability. Its design takes into account the requirements of single-engine operations, and is being gradually optimized for improved performance in Indian conditions. India requires a minimum of 99 F-414 engines for the Mk-2 aircraft. In line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India initiative, GE Aviation has expressed its willingness to manufacture the GE 414 engines within India. While the extent of technology sharing by GE Aviation with India remains uncertain, it is possible that they may choose to share either all or some of the technology. Several factors could influence GE Aviation's decision, including commercial considerations, strategic partnerships, and the mutual benefits for both parties involved. On one hand, GE Aviation might be inclined to share the technology to some degree, as it could open up opportunities for collaboration and potential partnerships in the Indian market. On the other hand, GE Aviation might have concerns about sharing the entirety of the technology, as it could result in increased competition in the market. By retaining some level of proprietary knowledge, GE Aviation could maintain a competitive advantage and protect their market position. Additionally, General Electric has made a request to the United States to jointly produce jet engines that could power jet aircraft operated and produced indigenously by India. In response to this request, the United States has committed to conducting a prompt review of the application, indicating a willingness to explore the possibility of such a joint endeavor. Currently, the proposal is awaiting approval from the U.S. Congress. However, concerns have been raised regarding the potential failure of the Tejas Mk2 project if the appropriate engine is not obtained. Dr. Ravi Gupta, a former scientist of DRDO, highlights the case of India's first indigenous fighter jet project, Maru, which emerged in the 1960s. He explains that despite the aircraft being well designed and highly capable, the project ultimately faced failure, primarily due to its non-indigenous engine.
the absence of an indigenous engine, was a critical factor that led to the project's demise, according to Dr. Gupta's assessment. However, the Maru fighter jet cannot be considered a complete failure. While the underpowered engine prevented it from achieving its original goal of being a supersonic jet, the Maru found success in other roles, particularly as a ground attack and bomber aircraft. During the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, the Maru was utilized effectively for ground attack missions, and saw combat in notable battles, such as the Battle of Longawala. Its performance in these operations demonstrated its capability as a bomber, and its usefulness in supporting ground forces. Therefore the success or failure of a project depends on various factors, and not solely on the engine. While the engine plays a crucial role in the performance of an aircraft, other aspects such as design, technology, funding, and overall project management also significantly contribute to its success. If the Tejas MK2 encounters challenges in acquiring an appropriate engine, it could impact the project's timeline and performance capabilities. However, it doesn't necessarily imply an inevitable failure. The Indian Defense Establishment, along with the involved stakeholders would explore alternative options, or potential collaborations to address such issues and ensure the project's viability. Lessons learned from past experiences, like the case of the Maru project, could help guide decision-making and mitigate risks. The ultimate fate of the LCA Tejas MK2 project would depend on the ability to address any engine-related challenges and successfully navigate the complexities of the overall development process.